So this week, our ESPN experts released the top 100 athletes of the 21st century, and these 10 NBA players made the cut earlier in the week. At number 85, you see Kawhi Leonard, 82, Chris Paul, 69, Jason Kidd, 67, James Harden, 51, Steve Nash, 42, Giannis, 41, Dirk, 39, Kevin Durant, 35, Dwayne Wade. That surprised a couple of people, that order. And then at 28, Nikola Jokic. Now, the final 25 players, they came out on this list this morning, featuring six more NBA players. That includes Kevin Garnett at 23, Shaquille O'Neal at 17, Tim Duncan at 16, Steph Curry at 14, and then Kobe Bryant at 10. Interesting. All right, we're going to get into that. Only one NBA player made the final 10 on the list. You guessed it, LeBron James himself found his name called at number four on the list. I mean, behind some goats in their own right, right? Yeah. Lionel Messi, the Queen, Serena Williams. And number one, this is interesting, Michael Phelps at, at number one there, Ramona. Did our experts get it right with LeBron's ranking when you look at who, again, this is athletes across all sports. Yeah. Where his ranking lands. I don't want to talk about LeBron. I need to talk about Serena here. Okay. Because Serena needs to be number one. I, I, I mean, she is the ultimate trump card. She won it all while she, the, what she said while at the she was pregnant. Yes. I mean, I mean, but it's not even just that. Like, and then my overall grand slam listen, greatness. I, I, like, the, the, okay, Serena should be number one. Okay. Sorry, we just said that. There. Yeah, LeBron should be the, the, the best basketball player in this in this era that we're evaluating. Right, I think and that's, that's right. what's, what we have to remember. From 2000, 2000 to 2000, yes. Okay, so that, that's right. It is the LeBron James era. He's the all-time leading point scorer, four titles, finals MVPs, regular season MVPs. In every measure, he should be the number, he should be the top basketball player here. Um, I, I just, I got I take a minute to get over this Serena thing. Okay. Well, while you take that minute yeah. to, to get over it, we'll just take one more look. Yeah. Michael Phelps, Serena, Messi, LeBron. Let's just take a look at the full list of 16 NBA players in a moment here with Zach. Do you think LeBron James, too high, too low, just right? It's, we're talking about Goldilocks. <laughs> Seem, seems just right to me. I mean, I don't. Uh, where did Djokovic come in? That's that's where I. Where, <laughs> yeah. where is he? Right. I uh, agree with that too, Zach. We need to. I need to pull up the entirety of the list here as we're looking, but we're checking on that. He was in the top 25. I, I agree. I'm he looking was too at low. this though, Zach. Did they get this one right or wrong? Steph Curry, four spots behind Kobe, and Djokovic is at. Repeat that, producer Condis. I'm not gonna get. Go ahead, I'm not going to get fired up about. A, <laughs> I'm not going to get fired up about a list. He's, it's all splitting hairs, but I will just say this one statement: Tim Duncan remains historically underrated and underrepresented, and all of these lists and listicles and lists on top of lists. Yeah. That dude should be a little bit higher than he is on this list, and I'll just leave it at and that. And I'll and I'll say that same word for Kevin Durant. I think. I think he's a little low there. We talked about this the other day just because, you know, he's been around all different teams. He's only one in one spot with the Golden State Warriors. I think some of his injury history has affected his all-time totals. He would have been right there with LeBron in terms of scoring. Um, but I also think some of the drama he's been through at the last two stops have affected the way he's being perceived and rated. He's an all-time great. He should have been higher on this list. And to answer your question, Zach, Jokovic, 11th. Yeah. 11th. A little low. Okay. Best men's player of all time. Okay. Well, since we're talking about Steph Curry, even though we took some detours through a couple of other athletes through all of this, he's preparing for the Paris Olympics yeah. for Team USA. We're only 10 days away from the official start of their gold medal quest against Serbia. So the United States is coming off of their best exhibition win of the summer thus far. And here they are this morning, arriving in London ahead of their next friendly game against South Sudan on Saturday. Head coach Steve Kerr, he hit some comments on the team's highly debated starting lineup here. Take a listen. The consistency in your starting lineup has been Steph, LeBron, and Embiid. Mm -hmm. Is that a pattern we expect to continue through the friendlies? Yeah, I like those three guys in the starting lineup. We've been looking at, at other uh, other guys uh, around them, and um, we obviously have a lot of great options, but um, I, I do like those three guys. Steve Kerr, he says he's sticking with Steph, LeBron, and Embiid in the starting lineup. When you look at the center rotation, Joel has been the least productive out of the group to this point. Now, we've talked about his health. We've talked about him not really playing on the world stage before and needing to sort of yeah. find a little bit of a balance with all of the rules here. It's no secret that he hasn't looked like himself, but Steve Kerr says, you know what? We are sticking with the former MVP. Do you think that's what's best for Team USA and for I Joel do. here? I do. I mean, look, Joel Embiid's space is the floor. 
That's he he can hit a three. They have to guard him. They're not exactly playing through Joel Embiid like the Sixers do. That's why you're not seeing the plus minus stats that he normally has. That's why you're not seeing the impact offensively that he normally has. They're not they're not playing through him, but they still need him as a floor spacer. I mean, he's like the best offensive lineman ever with Steph Curry. I mean, the way he sets screens out there. I mean, the way LeBron's driving to the hoop and no one is within 10 feet of of him because look at Embiid. Look. They got to respect him. He swings the ball. He's got an amazing basketball IQ. I spoke to him the other night. He said he's, this is the most fun he's had in a really long time, just playing with these guys. But obviously, I mean, look, can Anthony Davis do that? Can Bam Adebayo do that? Miss threes? No, no, no but stand out there on the three-point sure. line and be a real threat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joel, I, I didn't Joel mean that to be disrespectfully. I just, the yeah. B-roll that we're showing, obviously, is we're seeing him miss a bunch of shots. I, I do expect him to sort of yeah. settle in here, Zach. Yeah, I do do. And by the way, Bam Adebayo has been doing that. Bam yeah, made a bunch yeah, of threes recently. against Serbia <laughs> yesterday. The Bam AD combination off the bench has been destroying teams. Anthony yep. Davis is just inhaling shot after shot around the basket. These poor guys can't finish over him. But look, Joel Embiid was always going to be kind of a work in progress fitting in with how Team USA is typically played. And you have to invest in that. You have to invest time and you have to invest reps and you have to go through some hiccups to get the payoff in the end. So I understand why Steve Kerr is investing the time with Joel in the starting lineup. And look, overall, we can sit here and talk about the rotation and should this guy play with this guy? Through three exhibition games, Team USA is ahead of schedule. They yeah. look really, really good. Everybody is sharing the ball. The ball's moving. Yeah, there's some turnovers. We saw Joel Embiid throw the ball to a ref because he thought it was a player. There's been a little bit of that. That's chemistry stuff. But the ball's moving, and the offense does not look stilted or clunky. This team is playing really, really well for their third game together. Well, particularly that last game that we saw uh, against Serbia, Serbia and wondering if, okay, is Nikola Jokic going to pose a couple more problems, particularly as we've continued to talk about the interior yeah. presence here for Team USA. If they play like that, Eesh. I don't know that it matters if Joe, like, yeah. I, I don't know that it matters. I still think that talent, if they're able to play that way, yep. their best outing thus far, they still have that edge on the rest of the, it's just the world the depth. powers. I mean, their second unit would yeah. start for every other team. There, there's nobody who can compete with the depth that the U.S. has on this supreme team, as, as our colleague today <laughs> called them. I mean, you know, this, you can quibble with who the, the fourth starter is or the fifth starter is. It, it almost doesn't matter. If, right. any, if anything, having the second unit be as dominating as they have been has been the U.S.'s advantage so far. Zach, what was your biggest takeaway from that win against Serbia? Again, they look great generally. Anthony Edwards looks great. But Steph Curry... Ooh. What a revelation to see him in this environment with this talent around him. He's setting ball screens for everybody. He's running pick and rolls with LeBron. You can't switch that because you're going to put a smaller guy on LeBron. Here he is, ball screening. He's setting screens. He's still all over the place. And this FIBA 3 is such an easy shot for him. And it's just awesome to see him bending defenses at this level with this talent around him. I mean, there's been a couple times where he's just been spotting up, catch the ball in the corner. When it, like, Steph is just standing still. <laughs> it's so easy for him, and he's making it so easy for everybody else on the floor. It's been really, really fun to watch him in this environment so far. Yeah, I mean, that tandem, LeBron James and Steph Curry. We've waited that 20 years for that. Exactly. This is what fans have been <laughs> waiting to see. Uh, so from what fans have been waiting to see to what fans didn't know they needed in Ooh. Summer League, did you see the, the dunk of the summer thus far last night? Well, it got us thinking about the top screw snatchers of all time, our top five, coming at you after the break.
Second serve.